Saint Charles Lavanga was roasted alive on a slow fire in 1886 by the order of the King of Uganda, Mavanga II. Why was he martyred in such a way? And what about his companions? Why were they killed? Watch this video to find out. Charles Lavanga was a Catholic young man who used to serve in the court of Mavanga II, the King of Uganda at that time. He was very talented. In spite of his young age, he was promoted to the post of the head of all the Christian pages in the court of the king. But he did not use his talent and all the other gifts he received from God for his own benefit. On the contrary, he was a young man who gave all that he had, all that he received from God, he used them for God's glory. Thus, he used to take advantage of the position he had at his court, the gift he had to speak, to convince, to influence, all of this together he used to use for God's glory, to convert the other pages who were under his guidance from paganism to the true Catholic Church. Unfortunately, Mavanga II was a different sort of man. He had also received a lot from God. To begin with, he was the king of Uganda, but he was a man who let himself be taken by his bad passions. He was constantly making immoral advances, immoral proposals with his Christian pages, the others as well. And he used to sin with them, but Charles Lavanga would not permit this. He would do, use all in his power to rescue, to defend the pages under his guidance from the lust of the king. King Mavanga II was taken up by his passions, but he had a certain admiration for the Catholic Church and for the Christians in general. So he used to tolerate Lavanga until a certain point. But one fine day, his passions got the better of him. He could no longer restrain himself and he ordered that all the pages be summoned before him. He wanted to make the Christians apostatize from their true faith because he knew that Christianity, their true faith, was preventing them from sinning with him. Charles Lavanga knew that this was happening, knew that his end was approaching. He took the maximum advantage of the last few hours which were resting to him. And in that time, he baptized even more pages. He did much more proselytism and brought many others to the Catholic faith. On the Day of Judgment, Mavanga II demanded that all the pages who were Christians leave the true faith and become pagans so that they would later sin with him. Nonetheless, through the influence of Charles Lavanga, nobody fell into this trap. All of them resisted and were condemned unto death. Their death, their execution, marked Uganda at that time. The executioners could hardly believe themselves how these men these boys, to be exact, because the oldest one of them was 25 years old. How such young boys and men could go so happily. They were not afraid of death. They were tortured. The all sort of pressure was put on them to leave the true faith. Nonetheless, all of them persevered and joyfully. A Catholic missionary who saw the scene almost fainted out of terror. But a small boy, 13 years old, called Kizito, who is Saint Kizito today, saw the priest and pointed to heaven as though saying, I'll wait for you there. In fact, such was the strength and hope that they received from their faith that none of them succumbed to the temptations of the last moment. But while all the others were just burned to death, Saint Charles Lavanga, being the leader and having incited the most hatred because of the faith, suffered much more. He was not just burned to death, he was tied onto a pyre and roasted to death on a slow fire. The fire only consumed his feet, the rest of his body was consumed by the heat and roasted over a long time. In no moment did he show the least sign of hatred or revolt. He prayed for his executioners and for his country so that all of them would convert to the true faith. 
he pardoned them like our Lord Jesus Christ had pardoned them. What lesson can we learn from such an admirable life? There are many things that St. Charles Lavanga has to teach us, but one most of all. St. Charles Lavanga was able to display such heroic fortitude on the day of his martyrdom because he was prepared for it during his whole life. If I, in my daily life, I am afraid of standing up for my faith, if I do not use the gifts that God has given me during my daily life for His glory, it is extremely probable that when God asks me for a greater demonstration of my faith, when my faith is put to test, when I am put between a heroic act or a vile sin, I opt for the sin. But if in my daily life, each day that passes, I pray, I ask for help, I make acts of hope and confidence, and in my daily life, in the very small moments, I stand up for my faith whenever possible. On the day when I will be put to test, I can be sure that God will give me the grace to be able to sustain martyrdom heroically with fortitude. Let us ask Charles Lavanga this grace that in our day-to-day -day life we may be faithful and on the day of our death when we will have to face God, on this day we may be faithful to our Catholic faith so that after our death we may live in eternal happiness forever and ever. This is what we pray to stay in Charles Lavanga today. Salve Maria! If you enjoyed this video, tell your friends, hit the subscribe button and leave us a comment.